everyone now let us see next term next term mapping theorem mapping theorem or principle of argument In starting already, I told you Nyquist stability criteria is based on a theorem of a complex variables due to Cauchy, commonly known as a principle of argument. So, if we want to understand the concept of Nyquist stability criteria, we have to know principle of argument. And to understand the principle of argument, we have to know analytic function, we have to know singular point, we have to know mapping contours in the S plane, we have to know closed contour, we have to know enclosed point, encircled point, and we have to know how we can define number of encirclements. We have to know relationship between uh, poles and uh, zeros of open loop and closed loop system. Till now, we have seen uh, introduction of all these terms. So, in this video, we will try to cover uh, principle of argument. So, to understand the principle of argument, let us consider a function f of s equal to s minus alpha 1 s minus alpha 2 over s minus beta 1 s minus beta 2 so here we have two zeros for the system first at s equal to alpha 1 second at s equal to alpha 2 we have two poles for the system at s equal to beta 1 and at s equal to beta 2 let s be a complex variable let s be a complex variable complex variable we can represent it as s equal to sigma plus j omega on the complex s plane on the complex s plane the function f of s is also a complex quantity because uh, if uh, s is a complex variable we can say function f of s is also a complex quantity let us consider let us uh, consider let us consider f of s equal to u plus j v and uh, can be plotted on the complex f of s plane can be plotted on the complex f of s plane with the coordinates u and v Suppose this is my equation first. So equation first shows that for every point in the S plane at which f of s is analytic, we can find a corresponding point in the f of s plane. Or in other words, we can say function f of s maps the points in the s plane into the f of s plane we can say function f of s maps the points in the s plane into the f of s plane we know any number of points in the s plane we know 
any number of points in the s plane mapped into the f of s plane so for a contour c in the s plane which does not go through any singular point we have a corresponding contour in the f of s plane so let us consider let us consider contour c let us consider contour c contour c in s plane so in s plane horizontal will define sigma vertical will define j omega suppose we have a point s1 we have point s2 we have point s3 we have point s4 we have point s5 so this is my s plane now let us consider a corresponding f of s plane contour mapping already i told you how we can map any point in s plane to f of s plane in f of s plane horizontal will define u because we considered f of s equal to u plus jv and vertical will define jv so this is my f of s plane so we have contour like this this is corresponding f of s plane contour suppose cs so we have f of s1 you can say s1 is mapped into f of s plane with the help of this point similarly corresponding to s2 we have a point f of s2 and uh, here we have uh, here we have uh, direction in uh, direction in uh, anti clockwise direction similarly corresponding to s3 we have uh, point f of s3 in uh, f of s plane in uh, f of uh, s plane so here uh, we can assume uh, direction in uh, clockwise or in uh, anti clockwise how we can decide uh, we will uh, discuss uh, in the video now let us see what is the principle of argument we have a function f of s equal to s minus alpha 1 s minus alpha 2 over s minus beta 1 s minus beta 2 So where alpha one and alpha two are the zeros of f of s, and beta one, beta two are the poles of f of s. We can write equation first as we can write equation first as f of s equal to magnitude of f of s phase angle of f of s because uh, we can write uh, any complex quantity in polar form according to magnitude of f of s phase angle of f of s where uh, magnitude means magnitude of f of s means magnitude of s minus alpha 
मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ एस माइनस एल्फा टू ओवर मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ एस माइनस मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ एस माइनस बीटा वन मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ एस माइनस बीटा टू दिस इज एस एंड फेज एंगल ऑफ एफ ऑफ एस वी कैन कैलकुलेट अकॉर्डिंग टू फेज एंगल ऑफ न्यूमिनेटर पॉलिनोमियल मीन्स फेज एंगल ऑफ एस माइनस एल्फा वन प्लस फेज एंगल ऑफ एस माइनस एल्फा टू माइनस फेज एंगल ऑफ एस माइनस बीटा वन माइनस फेज एंगल ऑफ एस माइनस बीटा टू Now, let us consider a contour C in the S plane with any arbitrary point uh, S one on its path. Let us consider a contour C in the S plane with an arbitrary point S one on its path. so suppose a contour c in the s plane this is my s plane with an arbitrary point uh, s1 on its path so value of function f of s at s equal to s1 is given by f of s1 is given by s1 माइनस एल्फा वन एस वन माइनस एल्फा टू डिवाइडेड बाई एस वन माइनस बीटा वन एस वन माइनस बीटा टू सो फैक्टर एस वन माइनस एल्फा वन कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड बाई अ फेजर लेट एस हाउ वी कैन डिफाइन द फेजर So to define the phasor, first uh, we have to define the location of uh, zeros and uh, poles. Suppose we have uh, first zero at uh, alpha one. We can represent zero with the help of circle, with the help of empty circle. Suppose we have uh, second uh, zero alpha. Two at this location. Next, suppose we have a pole at s equal to beta one. Next pole we have at s equal to b at s equal to beta two. We don't know the Value of alpha one, alpha two, beta one, and beta two. So that's why I am considering alpha one here. I am considering alpha two here. I am considering beta one here. I, I here and I am considering beta two here. You can uh, you can define location of poles and zeros in S plane anywhere. It is just assumption. Make sure it is just assumption. So factor first factor s one minus alpha one can be represented by a phasor drawn from alpha one to s one. Similarly, the factor s one minus alpha two can be represented by phasor drawn from alpha two to S one. Similarly, factor S one minus beta one can be represented by phasor drawn from beta one to S one. Similarly, factor S one minus beta two can be represented by phasor drawn from beta two to S one.
so here length of the phasors define the magnitudes contributed by the factors so length of uh, this will define magnitude of s1 minus alpha 1 length of this will define magnitude of uh, s1 minus alpha 2 similarly length of this phasor will define magnitude of s1 minus beta 1 similarly length of this phasor will define magnitude of uh, s1 minus beta 2 this is my contour c contour c we can determine the angles by the phasors drawn from the given poles and zeros at point s1 suppose this is angle theta alpha 1 or you can say this is due to 0 so you can write uh, theta z1 suppose this is angle theta alpha 2 or theta z2 suppose uh, this is uh, theta p1 or you can say theta beta 1 and suppose this angle is theta beta 2 or you can say theta p2 and here all these angles are measured with a real axis in anti-clockwise direction so from the figure f of s f of s at uh, s equal to s1 may be written as f of s1 equal to magnitude of f of s1 angle of f of s1 or you can write uh, angle you can write uh, theta z1 plus theta z2 minus theta p1 minus theta p2 suppose a point s1 traverses the contour c in clockwise direction and here we are taking a clockwise direction as a positive direction and returns to the starting point returns to the starting point so how we can define the corresponding f of s plane contour we can define a corresponding f of s plane contour according to according to this here we have a clockwise direction that's why here i am assuming clockwise direction so this is my f of s plane horizontal will define u vertical will define j v suppose uh, i am mapping s1 into f of s plane with the uh, f of s1 so this value is my magnitude magnitude of f of s1 and uh, this angle is my angle of f of s1 already you calculated theta z1 plus theta z2 minus theta p1 minus theta p2 and this is my origin point and suppose this is a contour c s so diagram first will define s plane contour 
एंड डायग्राम सपोज सेकेंड बाई डिफाइन करस्पॉन्डिंग एफ ऑफ एस प्लेन कॉन्टूर सी एस नॉलेट एस सी इन डायग्राम वी कैन इजिली सी दैट पॉइंट एस वन फॉलोज द प्रिस्क्राइब्ड पाथ इन क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन ऑन द एस प्लेन कॉन्टूर एंड रिटर्न टू द स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट द फेजर एस वन माइनस एल्फा वन ड्रॉन फ्रॉम जीरो एट एल्फा वन विच इज एनसर्कल्ड बाई कॉन्टूर सी जनरेट्स एन एंगल ऑफ टू बाई रेडियस इन दी क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन एंड वी कैन से एल्फा टू इज नॉट एनसर्कल्ड बाई सी बीटा वन इज नॉट एनसर्कल्ड बाई सी बीटा टू इज नॉट एनसर्कल्ड बाई सी सो एंगल जनरेटेड बाई फेजर्स ड्रॉन फ्रॉम रिमेनिंग पोल्स एंड जीरोज दैट आर नॉट एनसर्कल्ड बाई दी कॉन्टूर सी वे एन एस वन कंप्लीट्स वन राउंड ट्रिप आर जीरो therefore f of s phasor undergoes a net phase change of 2 pi radians in the clockwise direction therefore f of s phasor undergoes a net phase change of 2 pi radians in the clockwise direction in the clockwise direction This implies that the tip of f of s must describe a closed contour about the origin of f of s plane in the clockwise direction. This implies that the tip of f of s phasor must describe a closed contour about the origin. of the f of s plane in the clockwise direction in the clockwise direction so we can say for each zero of f of s enclosed by s plane contour the corresponding f of s plane contour and circles the origin once in a clockwise direction already we have seen suppose if f of s plane contour c will enclose a pole at s equal to beta 1 of f of s then what will happen phasor s minus beta 1 generates an angle of 2 pi radians in the clockwise direction as s1 traverses the prescribed path since pole term s minus beta 1 is in the denominator of f of s so f of s plane contour cs experience an angle change of minus 2 pi radian in clockwise direction or plus 2 pi radian in anti clockwise direction this means that there is one counter clockwise encirclement of the origin this argument is valid for all other poles of f of s so we can say for each pole of f of s enclosed by s plane contour corresponding f of s plane contour and circles the origin once in counter clockwise direction or in anti clockwise direction
सपोज देयर आर पी पोल्स पी पोल्स एंड जेड जीरोज ऑफ एफ ऑफ एस इनक्लोज बाई द एस प्लेन कॉन्टोर then the corresponding f of s plane contour must encircle the origin z at times in the clockwise direction already we have seen and p times in the counter clockwise direction or in anti clockwise direction so this results in a net encirclement of the origin z minus p times in the clockwise direction so this relation between the enclosure of poles and zeros of f of s by the s plane contour and the encirclement of the origin and the encirclement of uh, origin by the f of s plane contour is commonly known as the principle of argument so in equation form principle of argument principle of uh, argument is given by n equal to z minus p and this concept is used when we will determine the stability of the system using nyquist stability criteria here n means number of encirclements of the origin made by f of s plane contour cs z means number of zeros of f of s encircled by s plane contour c in the s plane p means number of poles of f of s encircled by the s plane contour c in the s plane so with the help of principle of argument we can determine the stability of the system using nyquist stability criteria thank you